everybody, what's up? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are talking foundation. I am taking it back, taking it back to the basics of makeup. Today is going to be focused on foundation and how to properly apply liquid foundation, or in my opinion, how I properly apply liquid foundation and the tools that you can use to use it. It is just a quick video to tell you guys if you're new, how to apply the foundation. If you're not new to beauty, just kind of a refresher on how we apply foundation, not to get a cakey makey face. So if that's something that you're interested in, you're gonna wanna stick around and watch this video. But before we get started, if you're new here, hi, I'm Jamie V. Welcome to my channel of beautiful things. Make sure you hit that subscribe button before you leave and the bell notification so you don't don't miss out on any of the videos I upload. I do upload three new beauty videos every single week. And without further ado, let's get into this video. So I want to start making these videos more, these back to basic videos, if you will, just to kind of help because there's always new people in the beauty community who have not done makeup before. But it's always a disclaimer to take what you need out of this video, watch a couple other foundation videos, and just take what you need out of them because I am dry skin. So if you have oily skin, some of the things that I do or techniques may not be something that works for you. I'm basically just kind of giving you the gist of applying foundation, if you will. Uh, I will be doing a video probably within the next couple of weeks of how to prep your skin. I've done one recently that I'll link here, but it was quite a while ago. I will link there how you can kind of prep your skin, but I will be doing another one. So the first thing we're going to get into before we even start putting on makeup is going to be tools. There are several different tools that are going to really help you that I like to use. Um, this one is just a metal plate. It's literally like a little palette. You can mix on, you can put your liquids on. If I'm using a liquid foundation, which 90% of the time I am, sometimes I'll use a cream, never will I use a powder because I have very dry skin and it just doesn't work well for me. Um, there are a lot of people who do love using powders, even people with dry skin, and that's great. You just have to decide what works for you. So I will put it on here so I don't waste any products. The problem is if you just start putting it on your face or just putting it on your sponges and just you're going to wind up using too much and just wasting it and you don't want to do that. So I do like to put some on this plate. I got that from Amazon for like five bucks, I think. And then you have beauty sponges. You can use any beauty sponges you want. These are dirty. Please don't judge me. I need to wash my brushes. It's a whole thing. <laughs> But the beauty sponges are really kind of my favorite for after effect. Back in the day, when I say back in the day, I mean a couple months ago, I used to use beauty sponges for everything and I just never touched brushes because I was like, oh my God, I have dry skin. I don't want to use brushes. But now that I've been using brushes, I actually really love them. So that takes me into my next one is going to be foundation brushes. There are a ton of foundation brushes. You have flat tops, you have round ones. I don't really know what this one is, but I think it's just kind of like this, but bigger. There's kabuki brushes. There there are flat foundation brushes I have. There are so many different options when it comes to foundation. That's just something that you have to pick what works best for you, what look you like. If you do a brush, sometimes it can end up being a little bit streaky. So I do recommend having one of each. That way you can go in with your beauty blender later and just smooth it over. And then you also need to have some kind of puff, at least I do, just so at the end I can give it a nice little go over with powder and it looks smooth and beautiful and not cakey. That's basically it for the tools. So now we're going gonna go into foundation. So the first thing you want to do is you're gonna want to pick the foundation and which one works best for you. Again, like I said, there are several types of foundations: liquid foundations, cream foundations, powder foundation, peach undertones, olive undertones, pink undertones, neutral undertones, golden undertones. That's a whole different situation. I would definitely do your research, figure out what your undertone is and what works for you. I'm more of a neutral warm, so I can kind of get away with more neutral cool tone, but most of the time it's gonna be warm. So I do like to choose more warm undertones foundations. However, I do have some that are a little bit more cool tone. So in the winter time when I'm a little bit paler, I do look a little more cool tone than I do look warm. So I'm kind of like in that like between area. For the most part, you will see me use liquid foundations on my channel. I just like the way that they look. I like the way that I can maneuver them. If you have texture on your skin, for instance, I have eczema. So it's like dermatitis. It's cre It's creepy. <laughs> it's like kind of like right here. It's crusty, musty, and gross. Not really. I mean, I exfoliate so it's fine, but it is more rough and patchy. And and then I have like this guy. I don't break out a lot because I don't have oily skin, but sometimes you're gonna have that texture and I have these random small bumps just all over my face that are nothing. They're just bumps on my face. It's the texture of my skin. We have fine lines. We have all of that. So just to let you know, your makeup is never going to make that go away. If you're wondering why all the people on the internet and YouTube and, and Instagram and blah, 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 look so smooth, it's either one, a filter, two, editing, three, lighting, and camera. So just take that into effect that when 
we got into real life, we look just like you. Like our skin is not flawless. There are imperfections. Now, of course, you can always get cosmetic surgeries or cosmetic things done to fix that. But I just recommend just understanding and knowing how makeup works and it can't cover texture. It can do a very nice job of kind of camouflaging it, but you can't cover up texture. This bump is gonna be here. You're not gonna see the red nastiness of it, but you're gonna see that there's a bump there and there's just nothing that you can do. In order to cover texture, you would have to cake on so much makeup, it would look disgusting. So I just want you guys to know that because I know a lot of the times it beats people up inside that they're like, I can't get it to look like so and so on YouTube or Instagram. It's because there's a lot going on. These lights, okay, will fool you. I do have lines here and you'll see them sometimes. And I have the eczema here that you will also see sometimes. So we're not perfect. It's just good lighting, so take that into account. We're gonna get into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into a primer. Today, I'm going in with the e.l.f. Jelly Pop Dew Primer. This one is one of my favorites. Now, when it comes to primer, pick a primer that works for you. If you have larger pores and you want them to appear smaller, you're gonna wanna do like a putty primer. e.l.f. has one, Tatcha has one. If you have dry skin, you're gonna wanna do more of a hydrating, like Milk Hydro Grip, or this one, or the Too Fast, Too Fast, Too Faced Hangover RX is a nice one. Just a more moisturizing one than one that's for like silicone -y and covers pores. So this makes it really tacky, like look. <laughs> like it's so tacky it's so nice but it's also very hydrating so now I'm gonna go into the foundation I think I'm gonna go into in between I have a they're both so I have both of these they are one of my favorite foundations it is the milk makeup blur liquid but this one looks like it's gonna be a little too light today one is warm and then the other one is golden sands I'm gonna go on with this one so I do like to shake up my foundation before I apply it to the pan because I don't want it to be just broken up and gross. If you use the same foundation every day, you probably don't have that issue, but because I do have 30 plus foundations, some of them like to sit and just get yucky, so. Put a little on the pan. I do a lot more when I'm on camera than I actually do when I'm not on camera because I want you guys to be able to see it. So let me just show you if you can see that right here. You're gonna wanna start with like one to two pumps of foundation. You don't wanna go overboard, honestly, because what you can do is the less is more if that makes sense so I go on with about that much on my brush and I'll start to just stipple it on my face in the places I want and again you're gonna want to go in with very little you can rub it spin it around go in with very little and build that way you avoid that cakey behavior now you're more than welcome to use your fingers like that's definitely something you can do but I just don't prefer it because I don't I mean if you wash your hands before you'll be fine but I just don't really prefer to apply foundation with my finger unless it is a skin tint or like tinted moisturizer. But see how I'm just lightly covering and then we can go back through and add more, the more coverage you want. You just don't wanna go in too crazy at first because you want it to look flawless. You don't want it to look cakey. I just like to start it down here and then spread it up. I don't put a lot under my under eye just because I'm gonna also put concealer there. So I don't want it to get too cakey so I don't take it up all the way to my lid. Sometimes I'll leave it even like nothing here just because my concealer is gonna cover that. Some people cover their lips. I do a little but not intentionally. The reason that I don't like to do that is because you just don't want it to be too much. If you're not gonna use concealer then obviously I would take it up there and cover your eye under eyes but if you're gonna use concealer like I am then you're gonna want to definitely just not cake too much foundation here. So I'm gonna do my forehead with a beauty sponge actually. So I tap it in this and then I tap it over here So it's not caked in product and then I just start I just want to show you guys using a sponge because some of you will probably use a sponge and not a brush And then I just start to pat this in now when it comes to Using a beauty blender the reason I find a brush to be better is because when you're blending out your foundation I know that it seems like we're only on here for like two seconds and then it's blended no it takes me a minimum of five to six minutes to blend my foundation 
to look seamless. So if you are like blending in five minutes and then wondering why it's not really smooth and seamless, that could be because you're not blending it enough. You want it to really absorb into your skin. You don't want it to just kind of be on top of your skin. So I do recommend more blending. I know that it takes a lot of time to blend, but having a better blended canvas is going to be better for you in the long run. You don't want to swipe. You don't want to buff with a blender. You literally want to pounce. Don't beat the shit out of your face, okay? It's not necessary to do that. Just little, just little boop boop boops. Boop, boop, boop. So now that I have my forehead done with a beauty blender, what I do when I do the brushes, we're going back to the brush technique, is I go in and I just start to blend in what I've put on with a brush. Now, if I need more coverage, I will not go back in with a brush. I will usually go back in with my beauty blender, dab it a little on that excess area so I get just a little bit more, and then place it where it's needed. So like I had a little bit here still showing, so I would just go right in there and place it instead of completely covering my face again with another layer of foundation. I just spot treat basically <laughs> you're not treating but I just spot cover at that point now I go down to my neck or to my shirt if your foundation is not 100% your skin tone which I find hard to fucking do I have to bring it down my neck so it matches I promise you if you just go through cover your face look and see is there any red coming through any skins any imperfections coming through then go through and do that but I promise you do not need to keep covering your whole face when it's just a simple spot issue now I wanted to show you something the reason I did so much foundation is because I wanted to show you this this was like three squeezes of that foundation and I used like none of it. So when I tell you to start with one to two pumps, I, I mean it. It's just too much and that's wasteful. This is expensive. That foundation I'm pretty sure is like $40. So just keep in mind, we don't need that much foundation. If you need to add more to your pan or to your hand, that's fine. Work one to two pumps at a time so you're not being wasteful. So the next thing I wanna say, cause we're basically done here, I'm just kind of blending to show you guys like how long the blending process needs. I think in our time today or in our world today people just want to go fast and crazy and what they don't understand is it's just not necessary sometimes we just have to take time so when it comes to setting my foundation I actually just set very little at the end but you really don't have to if you have oily skin I do definitely recommend a good setting because your makeup will break up quicker than someone with dry skin but if you have like super dry skin skin and you're trying to go for a gooey look don't use so much powder so what I do is I take that powder just very little on the brush and I will literally just pat where it is like literally so little like that's it I'm not dipping again and it just sets my face but doesn't make my face look cakey basically that is it that is how I apply my foundation those are the tools that I use take your time play around with it if you have any questions you can always let me know down below but just take your time don't be wasteful work with one to two pumps work one side of the face and then work the other I don't do the dotting all over my face and then getting to the blending because the problem is if you do that if your foundation is a little bit more matte or dry you run into the problem of it drying to your skin in that dot shape and then not being able to blend it out so I don't recommend that I recommend starting on one side like kind of like splitting your face into three so up here here and then start here start here and then do here so that way it, it blends out nicely it looks good take your time but I'm gonna hop off camera real quick I'm gonna throw on the rest of my makeup and then we'll be right back to close this out so I put all my makeup on and I've come back to finish up with you guys. So I know that that was a very quick video, but I am trying to do more back to basic videos and I feel like they're not going to be extremely long. The eyeshadow ones and stuff might be, but when it comes to applying your foundation, it is fairly simple. There's just a few things, tips and tricks that I could tell you. Again, just go and kind of research which brush works best for you. The reason I showed you these three are because these are my three current favorite brushes. I love the flat top, but I also like having the round just so I can get into certain places and I like to buff so if it's round flat if that makes any sense it's even better but beauty blenders beauty sponges it doesn't matter the brand you just want to make sure that it is soft my two favorite ones are beauty blender and lunar beauty I do really really love the lunar beauty sponge and it is cheaper than the beauty blender but they're still in the double digit area I know that there are a lot more inexpensive ones just be careful because if it's way too hard or way too stiff you don't really want to be pouncing that on your face and it's not going to blend your makeup 
makeup the way that you want it to blend your makeup. But I hope that helped you guys understand a little bit more about how to apply liquid foundation. Just remember to take your time. That's all that is like practice, take your time, have fun, avoid the caking by overdoing the foundation, start with one to two pumps, work it on, and only cover where you really think you need more coverage. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope that it helped. And as always, if you did enjoy this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up for me. Make sure you are subscribed before you leave, and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye!